Let's talk some toys in here. <laughs> Hey, how's everybody doing today? It's the man child. All right, so today I have a review or my attorney playset overview. Here's the attorney playset setup. <laughs> um, yeah, I had this a few weeks now. It sat in box for a long time. It just uh, with time and health issues and stuff, I just never really got around to setting it up. And over the last week, I've been trying to come up with a plan. Where am I going to set it up? How am I going to set it up? Am I going to review it? So, yeah, this isn't really a, a review, an unboxing review. I already, yeah, took all the, you know, everything, like I said, out of the box. I put the box aside to part, you know, the, um, the main cover. And just messing around and set it up. Um, I put a, so it's in my living room right now on a table. Now, look at the size of this thing. It's, it's so cool looking, but it's not the most practical play set, you know. Or just peace, but it's fun. It's a novelty thing. It's nostalgia. Now, um, first, I got to say, I never thought being a Motu collector 40 years later, or an adult Motu collector at this point, like a lot of us watching this kind of stuff, content, would ever see an attorney play set. You know, um, I remember as a kid, around, I was probably around the age of 10, probably close to 11 when the vintage line started winding down. And I remember being in Child's Row with my mom, and I, I went around the corner to the Motu aisle, and they had an attorney place it in box. It was like, it said $99.99 with a big yellow tag, $100. And I said, look, mom, check it out. She was like, nope, no way. Let's get out of here. I've never seen one again. I've never, I don't think I've ever, even all my friends that collected the line, you know, that completed the whole line, like myself, I don't think any of them ever had an attorney play set. Now, I only seen years later on YouTube with reviews with one. But, uh, yeah, I can't believe I have one in hand. And, and a lot of us from the, you know, that got this from Mattel Creations. So, jumping ahead before we take a look at the play set. Check out this awesome poster you get that's included with the attorney play set. So, it's basically the same art as you get on the main box. A little smaller. The box is huge. But I didn't expect this. I didn't know you get this. So, I'm going to have to get a frame for that. So, taking a look at some of the uh, Easter eggs on this poster, and hopefully future figures will come, or figures are already released. So, up here, so we're going to left-hand side, back to the right. So, yeah, of course, we have uh, Rock on. Now, he was already released from Mattel Creations. I got mine. He's sitting over by Turney. I didn't review mine, but I do have him, like a lot of us. We have Rio Blast with the grapple hook sliding down on the main track. Another figure a lot of people want would like to have as part of the Origins. Hopefully, he's coming. Top of the central tower, we have Extendor. Um, he's another figure, too. He's supposed to be coming out from Mattel Creations. I got one hand early. There's a few of them floating around online. Um, yeah, they don't, they don't even know when their own products are coming out of the factory and where they're going. They're nothing new, <laughs> but they're, they're out there. We have Castle Grayskull with Bastiosaurus and Fisto. Bastiosaurus is another thing I had as a kid, and it's been teased a few times. That would be cool to see one in Origins. Of course, there's Stonedar over here. I don't know why they didn't make Rock on Stonedar 2 pack. That would have been makes you know what it would have made sense, but all right, I guess another single single card of figure to sell. We have Battle Cat, Fighting Stinkor. Here's another figure that's been teased too um, on a couple different you know card or card art teases on some of the Origins boxes. I don't know who he is, but maybe we'll see him in the, the Origins at some point. Here's Modi the Moat Monster. We have some new Horde Troopers with Horde Axe. Gear on, paint it red, and hoverbot. Now these were just announced for some of the reveals coming this fall. Part of yours line, which is cool. Um, yeah, there was a lot of new turtles and um, filmation stuff like that, and odds and ends like repaints. I want to say of figures, but nothing new as far as the vintage inspired figures we all want, like Rio Blast and uh, yeah, Stone Dar stuff like that. So I have a feeling they're going to reveal more at San, San Diego Comic Con. That's what they did last year, with, like Extendor and Cyclone. Their comments, yeah, slow, you know, to get this stuff. Here's Hero. He's another new no-brainer. would be sort of an easy, I want to say, repaint or some retooling of existing figure. I'm surprised we don't see him in the line for Origins, maybe at some point. And we have um, Laser Power He-Man, I think it is, and Laser Light Skeletor. I might have that backwards. These will be cool to see, too, because I don't think when the Vintage line ended around the time the main Attorney playset came out, and that was one of the final pieces... These two did not show up in the U.S. as far as I know. I think the, the line, the vintage line went overseas, and that's what these two figures... Well, they, were, they weren't in a two-pack, but they were individual 
And um, yeah, it's sold overseas, I believe. And they're real expensive today. The classics made them, which is cool as a two pack, but I would like to see these in Origins. I think a lot of us would. So going up the main tower, let's see. Got Grizzlor climbing up the ladder. And up top, we have, looks like King Grayskull and the Blaster. And I think that's, I want to say a character called Sorella, I think her name is. She's been teased a couple times, too. She might might see her in a line at some point. All right, so going down here, what else? Uh, okay, so over here we have another Concept Snake Man figure that's called Vitebore. And he was just announced alongside Reptiliax, which was another um, Concept Snake Man figure. It goes way back to the Vintage days. It never came out in the Vintage line or the Classics. Now, I believe both Reptiliax and Vipor are going to be Walmart exclusives once again, like Lord Grasp and Terror, which I think that's ridiculous. Those figures sold out in seven seconds, and yeah, then they go on eBay for over $100. $100. I, I don't understand why they do this. It's not right, but all right, that's what I heard anyway. So moving up, we got the Snake Tower, which is cool. Of course, Cyclone in the background here. Now, we, here was already on sale. Mattel Creations sold out. I got one as far as... Well, a pre-order, like a lot of us, just waiting for him to ship. Moving back down here, we have Lady Slither. She was also another Mattel Creation exclusive, sold out. Pretty cool figure. We have King Hiss in a serpent form. Again, he's already out for Origins. But even King Hiss is still a hard figure to find for a lot of people. And um, the large card he comes with, the Deluxe, he's uh, yeah, sort of rare and expensive online if you could find him. All right, we have Hordak with Mantisaur. Mantisaur is another awesome piece. I actually have a vintage one. Mixed in my Origins collection out in a man cave. Goes great. I'd love to see a remastered version. So maybe we'll see that in Origins. Because it's been teased a couple times already. And moving over here. Another important figure. Um, we have... So it's Modulock mixed with Multibot. Now, I did hear rumors that Modulock is coming to Origins. Sort of announced. He's going to use some Frogmonger parts. Like the chest, I believe. I did hear he's going to be another exclusive to wear. I have no idea. You know, uh, I, yeah, hopefully Mattel Creations. But, yeah, between him and Multibot, just really important figures that a lot of us are waiting for. Finish up that vintage line. Yeah, we'll see. So moving up the ladder, or, or up the uh, walkway here to Snake Mountain. So, of course, we have the um, yeah, Snake Mountain Origins. Pretty cool piece. Been out for a while now. And coming down the Snake Mountain, we have, looks like, that's Twistoid, okay. That'd be another cool um, Vintage Spire piece. We need, well, it'd be cool to see for the Origins. And I don't see Rotar anywhere in the art. That's the good one. So Twistoid's a bad one. But he's there. Another tease. And then the last tease we have here is um, Blast Attack. Another awesome figure. I We need the Origins. I'm interested to see if they would still, if he would maintain his action, fe his action feature. He had like this little um, tube that you would snap in the back with a button. You would press and he would snap blow apart. Like snap in two halves if you're not familiar with him. I don't know if the Origins are going to maintain an action feature. It's hit and miss with a lot of figures. But uh, either way, it'll figure out something. I would love to see him part of the line. But yeah, a lot of cool teases. And I hope during San Diego Comic Con, you know, they um, yeah, tease the rest of these figures. Like Modulock, Rotar, Twistoid, uh, Blast Attack. Uh, help finish up this line. All right, so back to the Eternia review or overview. So for the most part, as I said, I'm just going, going to go over the final build, um, some of the action features, odds and ends and stuff. There's already full reviews of this place set online, which get really in-depth, and they're long videos. I didn't want to get involved in that. And again, I didn't know how I was going to set this up and what I wanted to get involved in. But anyway, uh, and I got a piece of green screen in the background. It's just try to hide some of the distraction. I got a combination of sun coming in with a lamp on, so it's not exactly my you know, a uh, perfect idea lighting like I would do in my reviews. But anyway, and I'm holding the camera too, by the way, and putting it on a uh, tripod and going back and forth. So I have, uh, yeah, Vintage or Origins He-Man up front. Why not? Um, so you can see just for the overall scale. Now, what's interesting is in the stairs, they have pegs here. So, you know, I can put, I just got one of his feet on peg. But when you mess around, you can put a couple different figures um, on the steps, or just, I guess, one figure in different positions. As you see, I have He-Man in the middle. Uh, now you can see the moat, right? That's their moat around the tower, the main tower itself, which is pretty cool. I like the painting inside of it. And if you look down inside of it, it has, like, um, yeah, vintage-inspired weapons. Now this is an accessory that comes with this, like a Stingray, uh, weapon or something. I don't know, I just threw it in there. 
But that's pretty cool. So I like the overall painting and just the different shades they put in this playset. Um, now, speaking of moat, so that's accessory you get, right? Moat, the moat monster, or Modi to call them. Um, yeah, I'm going to leave mine a package at the time for now, but let's see. So this is like a pre attorney thing. Check out that art, pretty cool. All right, neat. So he's supposed to go in the moat there, or if you buy more than one. That's the whole idea of it. Now, you notice there's some griffins, statues of griffins here on each side. Now, one of these you had to put in. I think it was this one. Yeah, see that pops out, and there was even a sticker, a spiderweb sticker you put in there. Now, what's interesting, and I already put all the stickers on, too, I should mention that. Right, because um, that was a process in itself, and this is one of the sticker sheets. If you're curious, front and back, there was two of them. Yeah, I did all that. It took uh, took a while. I did an okay job. It wasn't perfect. Some are just yeah, messed up. <laughs> These arms are pretty cool, so you can see they articulate right on the left and right side. And now, hold on, let me jump ahead here. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot to talk about with this. So let me get him in out of the way for a second. That would help. Now, you got a drawbridge here that goes over the moat, and you it actually, it's spring, of, so you can put a figure on it if you wanted to, and then this other griffin on the right-hand side, if you lift that, that's how the drawbridge springs up. So the idea is to put a figure on that, and I guess, um, yeah, toss him in, we'll put He-Man again, I'm just going to use He-Man for example. You can see there's a peg for the foot. Put a bad guy, a good guy, but I don't know. I don't know if this mouth is going to be in the way. Yeah, all right, don't work like that. So it must have something to do when this is... Wait a minute, maybe i got to put this down. Yeah, I'm still playing around with this thing. I don't know. So you can lock that like that. Okay, there we go. So the mouth also locks in a down position. You can see that. Awesome sculpting. You can see the teeth in there. And then I guess when you push this up, it's going to throw the figure in the mouth. So let me do that one more time. All right, once again, I get He-Man on a drawbridge. I'm going to pull this forward with the mouth in the open position. And, um, huh, he kind of hits the top of this and falls in the moat. I guess maybe that's what it's supposed to do. I thought maybe it was supposed to catch him up in his mouth. But anyway, that's how mine works. Um, so there's a better look at the moat inside. And you can see this other <clears throat> excuse me, weapons over here. You can see like a, uh, yeah, axe, a power sword, shield. Pretty cool. So this hand moves to get a better look in there. And now setting him in on a drawbridge once again. So yeah, we more or less tested that action feature. Now I'm going to... So if you go over to the right side of this, looking at the face of it, you have kind of like this power orb. that Like the um, the classics sorcerers came with something like this. And I think they came gray skull. Pretty neat idea. And this is the switch for these arms and the action feature for the overall main tower face so when you see as you push this lever in that's what activates the arms and grabs the figure and now putting the camera down for a minute so once again now we know how the action feature works so of course i have he-man yeah looking out from the uh, tower to him for example and so you kind of operate this slowly but let me see what happens if i push it quick all right so that works pretty cool so it actually grabs he-man pushes him right inside the mouth um with the overall action effect and now I also want to try a Masterverse figure. So this is the new Revolution you know, Masterverse He-Man or Battle Armor He-Man with the cross armor on now. I don't know if they're going to work well with this mouth because he's going to hit the teeth in the bottom. But we'll try it. Um, yeah, it actually does. It works and pulls them forward uh, right on, underneath the teeth. And now I brought in a classic Skeletor. So they're a little bit shorter than Masterverse half in, by half inch or so. So let me try the um, drawbridge with him. So I'm going to look this up again. All right, see, now he just gets no, just gets stuck. I wonder if I push him underneath the mouth. Oh, try that. Okay, so the drawbridge pushed up and just latched him in the mouth. So I'm going to lock that. All right, and then let's try this effect. All right, so yeah, that works for all the Origins, Masterverse, or um, Classics for the most part. I'm sure depending on the figure. All right, so that was the overall action feature with this um, face as far as the front of the tower. But yeah, really awesome detail. Let me take a little closer look. Just the overall hands, the sculpting on everything. I like the colors. I like how it's just blue with a silver wash in it, or maybe it was silver with a blue overspray. But yeah, look at the eye. Even the way the eyes are in front of this lion's face, that's really cool how reflective they are. 
And there's inside of the mouth now. I'm gonna um so we already looked over the moat, this little switch on the tower. So I'm gonna work my way up like this. Um so you can see this is the track system that goes all around the tower. Now you can as I mentioned, you can build it around the tower. I originally had it set up like that, but for now the review or overview, I built it around everything so we could um, use this monorail a little bit. Um, all right, so let's see. So here's pretty much the top of it. Now, yeah, I put my cartoon Stratos in the top just for something different standing up there. You got a lot of room. You got these different flags. You can see. All right, it doesn't matter how you where you put them in. Um, just put them in like this, and. They're, yeah, some are angled to face out. And you got this one as well. Now, they also give you this other, like, yeah, it's a weapon or a vehicle, I want to say. I thought at first it sat, it snapped in the um, tower, but it doesn't. It just floats there. You can pick it right up, kind of be its own thing. Pretty cool. I have, um, that was Jetpack Man from that Castle Grey Skull weapons accessories. I thought for something different. And what's neat with this vehicle, is that it actually has fire and projectiles. So here's a closer look at that, yeah, main tower defense blast, I'm going to call it. Um, you have a cool, so you have Jetpack Man on it. See that? Um, yeah, it just spins, and yeah, it's neat that you can take it off the tower and do what you want with it. Maybe you can put it on your Origins Castle Gray Skull or mix it in with any parts of your collection you want it. But what I think is the best part of this, so not only... So it also articulates kind of up and down on this track. You can see that. And you can take it out of here. You know, something like that. Um, now, it has stickers all over it. So this was another main vehicle that you, you had to put stickers all over. It has stickers in the um, main control panel here. This glass piece, well, it's shut. Let me get, let me see. All right, sorry, I had to move the figure. But yeah, that's pretty cool. All right, so you have like a main control panel there for aiming. You have handles for your figure, and it sits pretty well. And in order to fire these projectiles, so they look like laser effects blasters. They just come right out, but you put each one in, lock it, and then there's buttons on the side, the left and right, gray button. And you can fire one at a time or both. It's going to shoot them both. All right, so that was the fire test. I just shot it at the tower. I'm going to put this back on top. Now, it was funny. Well, it's not funny. It is funny. I already lost one of these projectiles. You can't make this up. How do you lose something that's red and an inch long and that bright? I, I swear to God, I'll find it. But yep, I just just gone. I don't know. <laughs> Unreal. So I'm gonna spin this around for a second. The camera. Let's go to the back of this. So here's the top of the tower, obviously, right? Um, now this too, you had to put all these stickers on. So if you didn't want to use this, this is what it looks like from the inside. It's like some kind of launch pad thing. Got a lot of space in there for your figures. And then moving down now, you know, with the camera, sorry, holding it. Um, let me see here. So yeah, you got kind of a like a weapons rack in there, and you got this horde uh, sparring kind of armor piece. You can hold weapons in his hands, and what's interesting is he goes back and forth like this, and it moves a chair on the bottom, I'll show you. But let me let me uh, spin back around here for a second. Let's see. Yeah, you can see it comes with all kinds of weapons. I already put everything back there with a little cage, if you can see inside it, you know, inside the play set. Up in the area, you get like missiles and all that stuff. So yeah, it all connects. Now this um, sparring piece can come off, it can pop out of here. I'm just gonna leave it, but that's how you would control this other thing. Uh, so spinning around, let's see. So there's a chair you can sit a figure in. It's kind of like a control center. And going back to that sparring, um, that horde armor piece, it's sort of like, yeah, your articulated chair. You can see, a, again, your, yeah, I guess a control center in there, keeping watch for everything. So that's pretty neat. And then go back and forth and spin. Yeah, it's pretty neat. I, there's a sticker with the Mass Universe. I put that in there. More stickers on the lower deck, the second part of the deck. And then this thing is like an elevator shaft. Um, you can see that. And let me, let's see here. I don't get too confusing. So this is the last part of the tower. More stickers going there. It's the floor coming in, right? Here's where the mouthpiece drops. There's the second part. And um, yeah, more stickers here. It's pretty cool.
Now, you have an elevator here. So check this out. If you when as you spin this, you'll rise that, you know, the elevator piece to all three floors, all the way up to the top like that. And then going back to this elevator piece, so you can see there's pegs here for again, I'm gonna use He-Man. There's a little piece, a handle that you can hold their um hand on so you can peg your feet in. Then you're gonna crank the handle, operate the elevator, bring He-Man all the way down at a lower level. <laughs> And now with the elevator, the lift down in the uh, lower position, I also I swapped out the Origins He-Man with the Masterverse He-Man. So I'm going to crank this handle and just see how that brings that figure up. Oh, he's already stuck. Okay, I had to readjust the arm, move it out of the way. Let's see if he goes all the way up to the top. Yep. And then going back on a second level with that command, um, that floating chair for the command center, I just threw an Origins He-Man on there. So I'm going to go back to this. Horror Trooper piece, I'll just show you how it kind of rotates. Kind of weird how he sits in there. It's like, it wants to slide off. You got to mess around with it. But yeah, it's fun that they uh, added something like that. So once again, going back to the top of the tower, we kind of familiar with kind of figures that go up there. There's really no limitations, like whether you want to put a mass verse or classics or whatever. But dropping down to the upper level where the weapons room is and a, that training robot, training piece. So I put a classic Skeletor just to show you the scale inside the air. And dropping down to this lower level, you know, we have the uh, Origins He-Man standing up who was sitting in that chair. And then the lowest level, that's the Masterverse He-Man at the top. And there's plenty of room as far as height. And then once again, back to the second level with that Command Center chair. I just want to put the Masterverse He-Man in it, see if it works. Um, yeah, his legs sit off it quite a bit. But yeah, you can fit a Masterverse figure on it too and articulate them all around in there. All right, so moving on. Oh, by the way, I found another projectile. It was sitting in there. Yeah, you know, we have a cat and a rabbit sitting inside the cat house out over there. I had a feeling it fired over there. I knew it was around, <laughs> right? Um, all right, so as far as the setup with this tower, I mean, all these individual pieces, floors you had to put in, the weapon rack, the weapon rack, as I said, the weapons, that little horde robot thing, as I said, it just plugs in. I'm just going to leave it in for now. The chair, um, that would go into... Or that was, yeah, you stole into the, the floor. You put the floor in. This piece would go in later. Now, you can see there's these different support beams for the tracks. There's a couple ways you can set this up. So, for the most part, you're going to set one, two, three. The main one's around the tower, like in the front. When you get to the back of this piece, you have a couple options here. So, if you want to build the track as a ring, which I'll do after this is all done, I'll set it up. Just to go around the main tower, you would switch one of these main support struts into this position here and that's how, and you would put the track all around the you know the pieces that the directions call for and if not then you would switch the last piece down here so that's how i have it set up to build a track around all the towers um so moving down we already talked about yeah just the overall sub you get this ladder which is pretty cool you can hang it anywhere there's different spots for it it's kind of like a rope or a bone ladder, I want to call it. It's going to hang it there. Um, yeah, I'm not going to use it, but it's neat to give it to you. You get this little walkway piece, which is neat. Now, this can come right off. It's going to leave it on for now. It snaps right into the back of this. Um, let's see. So let's move over to the snake tower. So here's a closer look at the snake tower. I love that sculpt as far as that snake head. Now, it kind of looks a lot like that Vicron figure. It's going to be that Walmart exclusive I meant talked about earlier in that uh, poster art. It's exactly what that head looks like to me. The jaw does articulate. has really awesome detail. Right, The whole piece spins around. I'll show you why in a second. Now, let's take a look at the track. So you can see how the overall track goes around this whole tower. You put all these individual pieces on. That's the main support struts for this track. And they're yeah, sculpted like snakes, some kind of mechanical snakes or something, or bones, some type of serpent or snake. You get these metal chains that, you know, you can... Um, Take on or off. And there's actually, they're all different as far as lengths for, for the most part, I think, from the directions to put on. But really cool detail, I got to say. Um, let's see. So moving around here, right, top. Let's kind of take a look at all the, uh, just the overall tower like this. Now, you notice, too, with the attorney of that, what's cool is that these lock both this one and the Grayskull Tower right into the main tower itself. I don't, I never had the Vintage. I don't know if the Vintage did that. But I didn't know if it was something you set up and you had to guess the track. So when you put this together and snap these in, 
Yeah, the tracks go, they go together perfectly. I mean, once you follow the directions, I like that, you know. Um, all right, so spinning around once again, here's kind of a top view. Uh, let's see. All right, so I got to go down here. All right, here's some more details. So here's the upper neck piece, had a snake sculpt that wraps around the whole body. And it's pretty good paint, a little sloppy up here, but you know, it is what it is. Um, so you have this, like, yeah, kind of a sculpted snake piece. If you see that, um, hold on, I'm trying to get light in there. Okay. So it can spin and then you can pull it down, right? So going back to this, the main snake head. So when you pull that, check that out, it has a striking feature. So when one of your figures run a tracks, once I'll show later, you can attack them. And by spinning that piece, it spins the whole head around 360 degrees. That That's a pretty cool action feature. I didn't know... You know, Rizzo was going to have that until he mentioned it. And then when you get it in hand, that's pretty neat. And then just the fact that when it goes down, the mouth opens and strikes. And just to give a quick example with that snake striking action feature. So this is a, like a grapple hook that you could put on any figure's hands. Once again, we'll use He-Man. I think you got to remove the hand to do it. But once you put this on, you can slide down a track. And that's how you would use that snake head to attack a figure. Okay, so you can see I had that grapple on He-Man's right arm and... So it's sort of a manual kind of thing how you can set this on a track and your figure can slide around. It doesn't, I don't know if I'm doing it right, but I think that's the idea of it. It doesn't just slide on its own where you can you know, push them to slide, I guess. So you would set them up on the inside because if it's on the outside, as he slides, he's going to hit these guards. All right, so I think anyway. So I'm going to put them like that. And then I'm wondering, going back to the snake act, the strike, I'm going to turn this, hold on. I don't know if he, how he can reach him. Nope. Okay, so I had to move He-Man to a closer position to the striking head. So you can see him over there. So let's see now. All right, there we go. Well, sort of. So looking at the other side of it, I guess the whole idea is just like the snake is striking. I mean, I'm just doing my hand. You can use that handle, but it doesn't exactly hit the figures. Maybe it's not supposed to. I thought maybe it was supposed to grab him. I didn't expect just to grab and hold him, the mouth, because it's not strong enough for that. But I, I guess it's just the whole idea, the concept. Like he's striking at him, but he doesn't actually, yeah, even with that grapple, hit the figure. I'm not, I have to mess around with it, but that's as far as that head's going to go in striking distance, from what I can see anyway. All right, so moving forward, the next thing I want to take a look at is the Gray Skull Tower. So yeah, it's a pretty cool design, I guess. It does what it has to do. Paint it very similar to the Origins Castle Gray Skull, which I don't have that place yet. The Snake Mountain, I have the classics. Um, but I like the tone on this, just the do overall darker colors. Looks like there's... Two types of colors in it. There's a lighter green and then a bluish, uh, grayish, or like a bluish color, I want to say. So I like how they went about that. So moving up to the very top of the tower. So I put Extendor up there. It's the Origins Extendor, one of the figures I got in early, which you're supposed to go tell creations. Who knows when? Um, and anyway, kind of going back to that poster art. So that's how it totally looks on top of it. And spinning around, I put Stone Dar, or Rock on, rather, excuse me. He's on the other side. Look at the size difference on him, too. <laughs> So I put them two up there. The whole point of it is that uh, two figures can, you know, sit on top of the tower you wanted to. And again, it's not the most practical thing. But, so, let's see, going down. Now you can see how the track loops around off the main tower or going around, right? You can see the um, main supports. So they're painted, look like something like their rock or a steel type of beam mixed with rock. Going back to Castle Grayskull design. Let's see, so going down over here, you have some stairs going up, which is fun. You're not going to really do anything with it. You could put an origin figure, but you're not going to stand on that. It's just the idea, I guess. And so going down over here, so this does have a couple action features. So you have a, a like a grate here that you could put a figure on, it will fall. So there's a switch, and that's how that, your figure would drop down in there. And then there's also a, a door back here. You have a little skull, and that's how you open up the inside. I'm going to take a look at that, and that's uh, how much room it is, um, which is pretty cool. Let's go around the front of this for a second. I want to show you something else. And now taking a look at the front again, we're extending our standing, right, going down. So you have a little window in here. Again, it's just an opening. The whole overall play set or the main tower is hollow. Now dropping down, you also have another, like, a dungeon grate, which is pretty cool. They give you this chain with this plastic um, Kind of ball, so you can see if you pull a chain up, that's how you lift this dungeon grate up, and that's how it drops. It drops on its own through gravity. The whole point of this piece is, so you have this adapter piece that comes onto one of the main 
track supports. And apparently it kind of goes up like this when I see the directions. And when the um when the rail car, which we'll try soon, comes around, it's supposed to hit this. And it's like a booby trap, it makes this drop or something, from what I've seen in the uh, directions. You wrap around will hit that, and then when somebody's in there, and it drops. I don't know, it doesn't seem practical, but that's the whole idea of it. And then once again, moving to the back side of the main Grayskull Tower. So you can see also how this has a slot in it, and it will lock to this little bridge area on back of the main tower. And again, it helps set up these tracks similar to the Snake Tower. I like that whole setup, how they just went about locking these pieces in. This also has another, some additional stone outer um, foundations you can see going all around, which is, you know, pretty cool sculpting. It's just uh, molded in flat plastic color. Now I'm going to set the camera up. Let's try some figures with this um, Dungeon Great action feature. All right, so of course, bring in an Origins figure, test, see what he looks like falling through that uh, trap door with this main door open. I brought in the uh, Origins Leo Faker, just uh, focusing on some Origins aesthetics. A bad He-Man, so let's see what that looks like. All right, there we go. And that's what he looks like down inside. Plenty of room. Doesn't catch nothing. Okay, so I reset the trap door. Brought in the classic Skeletor. See what a classic figure looks like falling in this um, trap. So let me push the switch forward. All right, there you go. And he fell down. There's plenty of room. Um, he did kind of catch a little bit. I guess it depends on just how the figure falls, how the arms are positioned. But standing him up, just enough room. And laying him down, there's more than plenty of room inside this dungeon for figures. And now, one more time, I reset the trap door. Of course, we're burning the Revelation Masterverse He-Man just because of his height and the newer buck style. So let's see what the trap door looks like with a Masterverse figure falling. Okay. And here's a look at He-Man bottomed out as far as he can fall. So, yeah, it does work. He does uh, stand up. His head does peek out. Now it depends. I already tested this a couple times off camera. When the trap door fell, sometimes his arm would get stuck. He would go to one side, catch. You know, again, it's, it, it's not a practical setup for Masterverse, like a lot of stuff on this playset. But for the most part, if they fall straight, there is plenty of room. And just putting them inside in the dungeon, laying down or standing up, you can see that. It does work, even for the taller Masterverse figures like He-Man. And now, once again, moving forward with Eternia's other features and accessories. So before we get into the monorail car and setup, I just wanted to show that it comes with its own unique comic book called Battlefield Eternia. Has kind of its own style art going on, so I'm just going to flip through it real quick, take a look at it. If you're familiar, maybe you're not. He has uh, Skeletor, King Hiss, a bunch of stuff going on. I'm not going to get real crazy with it. See Strider in the background. We have Rio Blast, Moss Man. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Battle for Eternia with all the um, popular Motu figures. Looks like we have some Snake Trooper, Stratos. Uh, he Man is, yeah, just strange art. I don't want to say strange, it's so unique art. Check that out. We got Serpent, King Hiss, fighting He Man. All right, everything going on is King Grayskull. My King Grayskull is in, he's sealed in card out in a man cave. So, yeah, I'm not going to set him up, but I do have him. This looks like King Grayskull's queen, which they uh, show in a comic book. All right. Skeletor there. Oh, look at that. They have Skelegod. Look at that. Look at that setup. Spike or Beast Man. Oh, Scareglow, Evil Lynn. All the good guys on this side. Orko fighting away. Battle for Eternia. There's a moat monster. Wow, it's a kind of large comic. All right, and there's um, this King Grayskull's wife. Um, I don't know if they're ever going to come out with her an action figure. Looks like parts for... Oh, okay, she says the sketches and everything. All the... Parts they would use. And there's a concept art on the moat monster. And moving forward with the monorail setup and cars and all accessories to give you. So we already took a look at these grapple hooks, right? We demonstrated one on the Origins He-Man with the snake attack uh, setup. Now this can work on a classic arm or Masterverse, you know, arm for depending on the figures. They give you four of them. We already sh already showed the one. This is another accessory that can snap onto the tracks. Like upside down, a figure can hang on to it, but it doesn't really seem to slide from what I see. It's something I wouldn't use, but they do give it to you. Now, I think the coolest part is the cars, especially the main shuttle. So let's take a closer look at this. So yeah, here's your main shuttle. Awesome detail. I like the design of it. Um, has a blaster on the one side, but you can't put one on the other. It, it does snap off. So you can see the fuselage by putting your finger 
back here does open up pretty cool. Now I had to put all them stickers in there as all part of the sticker setup. You can put a figure in that way, but it's, I think it's easier if you look at the back side of it. That too, you had to put stickers, have some um, thrusters going back there. And what's cool, so this does open up and swing down. Check that out. Again, more stickers and stuff like that. So I believe this can house an Origins Masterverse or Classics figure, which we're going to try in a second. Now, when I test the action feature on a track, I'm just going to put the Origins he in there. I don't know. I think that just works for me. But the main um, motorized piece is this uh, section here. Again, you had to put all stickers on it. You can see this is where it sits in the tracks, which I'll show in a second. Um, yeah, it looks like it has little boosters in the back. There is a pair of AA batteries, which are already pre-installed in this. You just need a screwdriver, open a screw, put them in, close it. And you would turn it on by the switch here. Seeing so, then that little wheel will go round and round. This is just a guide on the back. And right now I have this main shuttle on, and you can put two different other pieces on. So that's how it would snap apart. And this is the piece by itself, which has decent weight to it. Um... It does work pretty good. I kind of wish the motor was a little stronger. You'll notice that when it goes around the lower parts of the track, it just kind of struggles depending on how much weight you have in here. But for the most part, it's uh, neat they gave this to you with this playset because I wasn't sure if it's going to have that action feature like the Vintage apparently did. So taking a look at the main shuttle once again. So I just left the main fuselage open. I closed it back. So it seems to me the right way to do this, you want the figure sitting up, looking forward. So once again, using the Origins figure, the Origins He-Man. Straighten your arms out and whatnot. It looks like you would put him in from the front and kind of position him up. See that? So he's looking forward. And his seat, I guess, which makes sense. Put the feet down here and close the uh, main fuselage. Okay, so I took the Orges He-Man out, obviously. Opened the fuselage cockpit visor piece. And I'm going to try a classic figure. In this case, a classic Skeletor I got hanging out. And trying to put him in there like He-Man with the feet. Um, yeah, it doesn't look like he's going to fit. And then the back opens up. I wonder if I can lay him down. All right, so I opened the back of this, put him in that way with this open too. And yeah, for the most part, though, maybe laying forward looking up. It, um, yeah, it's not really meant to hold uh, classics figures unless you were to take the boots off or something and put the, which is, yeah, you know, that makes sense, but put the figures in. Specifically designed for a uh, Origins figure. And then, of course, I tried the Masterverse He-Man. I mean, if the classic Skeletor isn't going to fit, I don't know why Masterverse would. So you can close this. The feet can go forward, but trying to push him back, close this. Yep, it's not really going to work. So next up is what they're calling the Sky Cage. So obviously, it's another monorail card accessory and carry figures in. So it would be the same thing with this um, main motorized track piece. So we just snap in like that. Now this one, the... So the cage opens like that in front. Yeah, I put more, some more stickers in there. These are stickers you all to put on. There was some on the bottom. I guess they're like thrusters they want you to put on. And then this little handle here, by moving that forward, that's how it opens the bottom up. And now let's try some figures inside the sky cage. So, of course, I'll put the Origins He-Man first. Um, yeah, I'm just going to push him in from the open part. I, I guess the idea is you put them in laying down and looking forward or laying down or something like that. They're not meant to sit up. I'm just going to put them in this way, looking down. And now, of course, I took the Origins He-Man out. I'm going to try the Classic Skeletor or Classics figure. So, very similar to the um, main shuttle. He doesn't... Let me put him this way. Bend the legs up. Um. Oh, yeah, he does fit. So, you're bending the knees. You're making him look forward like out the cage. And uh, Does he? No, just barely. We twist them like this. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. That's stupid. All right, so you can fit them in that way. You'll twist it up. And then, of course, taking the classic Skeletor out and trying our Masterverse He-Man once again. Yeah, it's a no-go. This is not designed for classics or the uh, Masterverse. It's just the Origins. What should be fair, that's what it should be for. But I want to try them out. Maybe there's a way you could squash me or take the boots off. I don't know why you would, but yeah, we tried it. And now the last piece to go on that monorail setup is this... Um, Sky or a backpack or, or jetpack, excuse me. So, yeah, some blaster sculpted on it, and a figure would go in from the front. Once again, it'll attach. This is the motorized. You can see the, where it would clip into this motorized motor to go around on a monorail track. Um, pretty neat. And so, once again, I'll try the Origins He Man. I put my, I put that new Revelation He Man head on his body. That looks really cool in his body. I might have tried that in my review with him. I don't remember. I probably did, but wow, I can't believe how good the skin matches on this. How good it looks. Anyway, mix it up. So pretty much the figures, as far as origins, 
right? So it will look like this. They're going to go, I think they go inside, or you slip them in this way, right? You set them, okay, like that. And then you would hold the um, handles on the blasters. Okay, so let's test out this monorail and track setup. So you can see I got the original Sky Shuttle, the first one. I put the Origins He-Man laying down because that's all it really fits in there. You can see I attach it to this motor. And pretty much I show it's, it's going to snap right onto the track inside the groove. And here's the guide. And let's put the switch on. Check, test it out. All right, there it goes around and around. Coming around. First track. I'm going to move with this camera. Sorry, I got a cat and rabbit running around here. I'm excited. There it goes. Okay. Struggling going up the uh, track, but it's doing it. So you can hear that motor like really like ee. -ee. Pretty cool. Alright, I'm just gonna pan out, take a look at how it goes back around. That's <laughs> it. It is pretty cool. Come on, you can do it. Oh, hit something over there. Alright, so that was the main shuttle test. Let's put this jetpack on, this motor set up. Of course, I put our Origins He-Man on. And there's He-Man going round and round with that jetpack set up. Yeah, that works a lot better because it's just so much lighter than those cars. Let's go around here. There he comes. <laughs> now the last setup is I put that sky cage back on this motor adapter. I mean, I'd rather the main shuttle and that main jetpack. I don't have any use for this. It is neat they gave it to you, so let's check that out. Once again, we have Gorgeous He-Man side. This looks like two with certain figures. You might be able to get two in here, like maybe He-Man and Teela side by side or something if you wanted to. I don't know. But anyway, let's see what that looks like. All right, goes around and around. I think really shakes. Well, you can hear that mode. Oh, he just hits Jeff Pac-Man over there. He's in the way. <laughs> coming up, coming around. Let's see. You can do it. All right. All right, so I took him in out of the main shuttle. I shut it off for a second. And as far as this trap with that door, so from the directions, you put the chain, I think over this piece, and it's supposed to come around and hit this and set that trap. So let's see if that works. All right, so it's going around. I don't know if I have it set up right. It's supposed to catch that. And drop that door. There we go. No, I didn't drop the door. It's supposed to hit it and it's supposed to fall. I guess something you got to play around with. All right, so it was my overall setup and test of the Attorney playset by Mattel Toys. That was part of Mattel Creates exclusive uh, sale, which I think came out awesome. A um, couple other things. So right, here's that hook I was talking about that you clip on a track. So it doesn't move from what I can see, just locks there. But I did put a classic Skeletor. It does hold on to it. And the Masterverse He-Man works as well. I just drew classics for now. Well, one last look. I set He-Man up over there. And another thing I did too. Oh, I put the Wind Raider up in the tower. I just wanted to see what something like that big vehicle would look like up top. Even with that Castle Grayskull um, stand that comes with it. Yeah, it works up there pretty cool. A lot of space. You can do a lot of fun stuff with this playset if you have it. I mean, you know, if you didn't, they're on eBay now for, yeah, probably double the cost. But, hey, you want it that bad, they're out there. It's, uh, yeah, I'm really excited to have it. It's it's fun. It's cool. I never thought I ever would have an attorney to play set. It's part of my Master of the Universe line. Um, you know, it's uh, it's amazing. It's not the most practical thing. It's not about that. It's just uh, part of the fun lore going back to Motu and all that good stuff. Pretty neat. I'm glad I set it up. So I hope this answered everybody's questions. I appreciate everybody watching. And until next time, take care.